Hi, my name is Jeanette and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. So today we're going to talk about the 24 books that I plan to reread in 2023. Now if you saw my goals video that was posted sometime this week earlier, you will know why there's 24 books and not 23 and 23. So yes, so I have 24 books that I want to reread this year. I own quite a few books on my shelves that I haven't read according to Goodreads. Now I have read them, but it was before I started Goodreads and Good I started Goodreads in 2012. So it's been over 10 years since I've read most of these books. There are a few other books that I just want to reread because I really enjoyed them and just want to reread them. So I took all the books that I want to reread, so the, including the ones on my shelves and just the ones that are on my Kindle that I want to reread at some point. There was a hundred and two, I want to say 102 books in total. So I put them in a spinner wheel on my computer and then I spun the wheel and let it choose what book was going to go on my bingo board. So basically I had a few requirements, only two, is I could not have books from the same series. So if I had a book from a series already and it came up again, then I couldn't read that one or couldn't put it on the board. I mean, I can read it, but I couldn't put it on the board as a separate space. And the other requirement is I could only have two books by the same author on the board. I have a lot of books by a lot of different authors that I want to reread. So this would limit it to 12 books. Other than that, those were the only requirements I had. So I spun the wheel and whatever the first book was, that's gonna be book number one on my bingo board. Um, you can't really see this. It's not completed. This will eventually go into my reading journal, but I just haven't finished my reading journal yet. So I have 24 books on this bingo board. So let's just start. The first book, I should have, maybe I should have pulled these books first, but I didn't. Oh well. The first book is River's Edge by Terry Blackstock. This is book number three of her Cape Refuge series. It is a romantic suspense and this one came out in 2004. So as I said, majority of these books are going to be older. So I want to read them and do I want to keep them on my shelves or is it time to pass them on and let somebody else enjoy them? So yes, so that is book number one. Book number two is... Book number two is Bleachers by John Grisham. I have previously said that I want to reread some of my John Grisham books to see do I still want to keep his books. I have 25 of his books on my shelf. So we'll see. This one, I'm not too sure, but it was the one that came up on the spin and I said I would go with the first one that came up on the spin. So this is a sports based fiction from what I understand, and it looks like it's about football because it says quarterback. I don't know anything about football, so this could be a challenging read. We will see. Okay, number three is The Killing Tide by Danny Petri. This is book number one in her Coastal Guardians series, so I have read this book when it originally came out. But I have now collected the rest of the series, so I want to reread it so that I can read books two and book three. Um, it's a romantic suspense. Book number four is True Stained Lies by Terry Blackstock. This is another romantic suspense. It is book number one, I think, of the Moonlighter series. I don't remember much about it other yeah I don't remember just when truth doesn't make sense will lies prevail so we'll see okay number five is point of no return by Susan May Warren this is a romantic suspense this one originally came out January of 2011 
So, yeah, I it says mission Romeo and Juliet. Ooh, an American boy and a war lord war lords engaged daughter have disappeared together in an eastern european border country only one man can find them in time to prevent an international meltdown chet striker but chet is taken aback when he realizes that the boy is the nephew of may lund chet's former flame when may insists on rescuing her relative herself chet knows he has to protect her from the enemy on their trail yet can he protect himself from falling for may again says missions of mercy saving the world is all in a day's work <laughs> okay so book number six is short straw bride by karen whitmeyer this one is on my kindle it is a historical fiction and i if i remember correctly i mean it's short straw bride kind of um some brothers pull straws to determine which brother is going to go for the girl and that, that's basically all I remember of it. Nothing much else. And I, I know there's probably a lot more to it. It is a Karen Whitmeyer book. It's historical fiction and set on a ranch. So yes, I want to reread it and see will I enjoy it as much the second time as I did the first time. Okay, book number seven is The Fifth Avenue Story Society by Rachel Hawk. This is a contemporary based in New York. So five strangers get an invite to attend this story society at a library and they don't know each other. They get there and it's like, what's going on? Like nobody really seems to know what's going on and they keep going back to these meetings each week, or each week, each month, I don't know. They keep going, I don't know how often the meetings are held, I can't remember now, but they keep going back and they get to know one another and it just, I really liked how the friendship developed between these characters who are so different from one another. So yeah, I really want to reread this one and just kind of, I remember this was probably my favorite read of 2021, 2020. When did I read it? When did it come out? I think. Wow, there's a lot of praise for it in the front, like for her. 2020. Yeah, so I, I remember really enjoying it, so I want to reread it. Okay, my next John Gershon book. Is The Pelican Brief. This one was made into a movie. Julia Roberts. Um, I honestly, I don't remember a lot about it. I remember reading the book and I remember watching the movie and not really enjoying the movie. So this could be, could be an interesting read. This one is quite old. Um, 92. Yeah, 92. Yeah. So yeah, but it was the John Gershon book that came up. So it's the one I have to read. So we will see. So that is the two John Gershon books that are on my list. So no more <laughs> by him. Okay, then we have The Great Christmas Bowl by Susan May Warren. Now this book I've had since 2011, but this one has since been reissued in 2022, just December, I think. She came out with Kind of a new version of it new version retitled i don't know how you say that um i think it's all i want for christmas i think is what it's called yeah i'll insert the new cover here so personally i don't like when books are changed and kind of covers because it makes you think it's a different story and then when you're reading it, it's like oh wait that's the same story but i have to say i do prefer the new cover over this cover I just, yeah, I don't know. But it's Susan May Warren, so it is a novella. <laughs> Not very long, so I don't know why it sat on my shelf for so long. I don't remember anything about it. So we are going to read it and see. Then we have... So number 10 is Greater Love by Robert Whitlow. 
This is a legal based suspense mystery. Um, it is part of the Tides of Truth series. It is book number three in that series. And it just says the Tides of Truth series follows one lawyer's passionate pursuit of truth in matters of life and the law. So because it's book three, I'm not going to read any more about it because I don't know. I assume the characters carry over from book one and two, but I don't know for sure. So I'm not going to read anything more. But yes. Okay, then we have another Christmas book. The Judge Who Stole Christmas by Randy Singer. Again, I don't really remember much about this one either. I don't remember much about any of these books, really. Um, so it starts with, it starts innocently enough in the sleepy town square of Possum, Virginia, but it ends up a national scandal. Can a federal judge outlaw Christmas? So it is a legal base because Randy Singer is a lawyer turned writer. Might, I don't know if he still practices or not, but yes. So, yeah. Okay, then we have another Robert Whitlow. And that is Life Everlasting. This is part of the, it says a Santee series, book two. But I'm pretty sure this series has been renamed as well. I think it's like Alex, Alexa, Alexa Lindale. I think is the name is a new name of the series who is the main character in this series um, darkness loomed but the music and the flickering light persisted then grew stronger hmm. so because this is book two I don't know how much it carries over from book one so I don't want to say a whole lot but I do want to share this paragraph because it kind of makes me really kind of want to know more the music stopped, the room emptied, and Baxter Richardson opened his eyes for the first time in months. He should have died from his involuntary plunge off the cliff, but he's alive and mortal danger remains. Familiar en enemies stalk him. New ones hover close at hand. So, yeah, it does. So he falls off the cliff, and he, now he's kind of re reawakened after months. So does he fall off the cliff in book one? I, I don't know. No, and what's his relationship to Alexa, the main character in this book? Yeah, how many times can I say I don't know, but I'm interested because that's basically gonna be every single book on this list. Okay, then we have Protective Custody by Lynette Eason. So another romantic suspense. Lynette Eason is one of my favorite authors and just an autobi author for me. And I know I read this one before. This one came out in August of 2010 and I really, really enjoyed it. So let's find out if I'm going to enjoy it again. Okay, so I was so excited when this one came up on my wheel because it is Sandpiper Cove by Irene Hannon. This is book number three in her Hope Harbor series, which I plan to reread the whole series this year. But book number three, from what I remember, is my favorite of the series at this, like I've, at this point in time. I've only read up to book number five, but I remember this was my favorite of the series so far from what I've read. So I'm really interested in going back and getting to re reacquaint myself with these characters and the whole series, but this one in particular. So yeah, Sandpiper Cove, Irene Hannon, book number three of the Hope Harbor series. Okay, I think my pile is gonna start to get a little wobbly. Okay, then we have True Honor by Dee Henderson. Again, it's an older book. I want to say early 2000s, 2002, and it is a romantic suspense following um, Navy, Chief Petty Officer, CIA, Ooh. SEAL Team, has SEAL Team. So yeah, 
It is book number three of the series, so I will hopefully read books one and two before I get to this one. Okay, At Love's Command by Karen Whitmire. This one is also on my Kindle, and it is book number one of the Hangers Horseman series. I have read book number one before because that's how it's on this list, but I have not read book two or book three. So I'm really hoping to read this series this year. So I was happy when book number one came up because that's a prompt to read the whole series. It is a historical fiction by Karen Whitmire set in Texas. I don't really need to know anything else. Okay, then another D. Henderson book is The Witness. It is another romantic suspense. I, I have a lot of romantic suspense on my shelf. My favorite genre? Maybe? I think so. Um, and this is... <laughs> it says here, The Wait is Over. New book. Did I say this was book two? I'm pretty sure it is. Um, yeah, so it just says, I know the family secret. Amanda Griffin is on the run. Eight years ago, she disappeared after witnessing a terrible crime. Now her family thinks she's dead, but she's back in town, desperate to find a way to protect the one she loves. Okay, so then we have Dreaming in Technicolor by Laura Jensen Walker. This is book number two of the Phoebe Grant series. I don't know much about this one. Again, we're looking at early, yeah, 2005. Okay, everyone's favorite film geek, Phoebe Grant, heads off to merry old England and changes her dreams from black and white to living color. So I think it's... It is contemporary, and I think it's really just kind of more of a fun girl story. Probably young outlaw. Probably. I'm not really sure, though. Okay, number 19 is One Final Breath by Lynn H. Blackburn. This is book number three of her Dive Team series. This is the series that introduced me to Lynn's writing and just made me want, to, made her like an auto buy author for me, just want to pick up the others without even knowing anything about them. So I am really excited to revisit this series and see, will I enjoy it as much the second time around as I did the first time around? And now the pile is definitely getting unsure. <laughs> Okay, so then we have Keeping Guard by Christy Barrett. This is a romantic suspense, came out in February of 2011, and it says, you can't hide from me. So, somebody's on the run? I don't know. Somebody's stalking somebody. I do know that. <laughs> so she flees her home for the protection of a former military man in small Virginia town. Okay, then we go in a completely different direction. And we're going with an Agatha Christie, Murder on the Orient Express. I'm like, did I even grab the right book? Um, so it is part of the Perot Mysteries. I'm not even going to try to say his first name. And I remember really enjoying this. And I have seen the movie. And I think I saw the movie after I read the book. Or a version of the movie. I know it's probably being... I think the movie's been redone since I've read it. Like, I don't know if I've seen the new one. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. But after I read the book. So, yes. And I've really enjoyed Agatha Christie's. And I don't know why I haven't picked up more. So, yes. I'm going to reread this one. And hopefully it'll reunite my love for Agatha Christie. We'll see. I feel like I'm going to topple. <laughs> it's because there's so many uneven, like, smaller books. Okay, how many do we have left? Ooh. Okay, three books left. 
Okay, Lake of the Cross by L.D. Stoth. This is book number two in her Campground Mystery series. She, as it says, a local author to me. And it is a Christian fiction um, put out by Word, Word Alive. <laughs> and I just, I really enjoyed getting to know the characters in this one. I am not a campground person. I'm not a camper. But I think anybody who is a camper will probably enjoy this. Or maybe it'll scare them off from camping. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, but I have, I've read books one and two. I have not read book three. So the fact that number two is on the list, hopefully I can get this series completed this year. Okay. Then we have Agent Undercover by Lynette Eason. Another Romantic Suspense by Lynette Eason. This one, it came out in August 2011. And yeah, it is about a protecting a baby. Well, not, not a baby, a six-year-old. Um, a traumatized six-year-old boy hasn't said one word since the unsolved murder of his single mother. And now the killer is after the child and the devoted uncle raising him. So yeah, I... And I love romantic suspense, and I love Lynette Eason, so will I enjoy this story as much as I did the first time around? We'll find out. Okay, so that is my last physical book to put on the stack. The very last book is London Tides by Carla Lorando. This is book number two of the McDonald Family series. And book number one is Five Days in Sky, which I read for the third time this year and just absolutely loved. So I want to reread book two and see what do I think of this of these characters. And hopefully I get to reconnect with James McDonald, who is the main character in book number one. And Andrea. I mean, I liked her as well. So this one features one of the brothers, I think. Maybe the sister. I think it's the brother. Wow. Maybe I should have looked this up before I started talking about it. <laughs> oh well. So those are the 24 books that I plan to reread this year. So majority of them I have physically. Some of them are on my Kindle, but majority are physical. And so we'll see. Will I reread them and then decide to keep them or will it be time to pass them on? Wait. Hopefully I can get them all read in 2023. We'll see what the year brings. I want to thank you for joining me today. And is there any book that you want to reread this coming year? Or are you a rereader at all? Or it's kind of like once and done? You're good? I'd love to chat in the comments below. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day.